It is a great day, Mother's Day. Oh, I was told to make a quick announcement, and the quick announcement is next uh, Saturday we have our men's uh, morning breakfast Bible study thing where I'll teach you how to study the Bible. Make sure you bring a computer, laptop, or a good uh, phone, okay? I, I use the iPhone, but whatever you want to use, as long as it's not a flip phone or something stupid like that. <laughs> All right, sound good? And don't come with a can with a wire. I'll, I'll use this. All right. Anyways, it's great to be here. Ladies, welcome. It's a special day. It's a day that we want to focus on mothers. Uh, the reason we do that is because the Bible says to. It says, honor your father and your mother. And so, men, Father's Day is coming. But today is for the ladies. It's for the women, right? And the t title of today's message is The Irreplaceable Value of moms, the irreplaceable value of moms. And I came up with that because as I was getting ready and pre uh, preparing for the message, I came across an article, and this is the line in the article that hit me. You ready? It says this, the research highlights that Christian mothers play an irreplaceable role. Wow. Yeah, give them a hand. They play an irreplaceable role. And so what that did is it got me thinking about what is that irreplaceable role that Christian mothers play and how important is it? And that's kind of the main idea that we're going to be talking about today. But before we do, it's kind of a tradition. Every Mother's Day, I go to salary.com and see what would a mother be paid if she was paid for what she does. Does that make sense? Okay, so this year I will quote the summary statement. Correct? Correct? Ready? This past year, a stay-at-home mom could earn more than $200,000 annually. And we can all agree they're worth every penny. Amen? Now, here's the deal. If you go on the site, you can put in other skills. So that's your base salary. Then you put in other skills that you have. And then when you do, you could even get more. I'm thinking, I'm going to quit and become someone's mother. <laughs> they get paid more than I do. And if you're a working mom, oh, man, you've got the whole family over the barrel, don't you? I've got 200 grand in effort I'm doing taking care of you slobs, and then I have to work. <laughs> so we want to honor the moms, and even though we're playing right now, we want to say thank you. Thank you very much for all that you do for God and his kingdom. So let's have a word of prayer and look at the irreplaceable value of a strong mom. Dear Emily, Father, we thank you for this time that we can celebrate the moms and also worship you and learn from your word. And so, Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit would teach us, open our hearts, help us to hear the things we need to hear and make the adjustments that you want us to make. Help me to communicate accurately, Lord, and forgive me where I misspeak, for I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so why are strong moms important? And the short reason is because moms hold society together. Did you know that? It's the mom that holds the society together. Let me read you an article written by the Honorable K. Cole Jones. She has a very high-level office in the government, and she wrote this article. It's entitled, Mothers Have an Impact That Goes Far Beyond Their Own Families. With Mother's Day approaching, it's a fitting time to talk about the essential role that mothers and the institution of the family play in America's ability to thrive as a nation. Most mothers may not even realize that their role has an impact that goes far beyond their own families. Let me say that again. Far beyond their own families. How many of you mothers have mothered other kids, other parents' kids, or other, yeah, other mothers' kids? In other words, you had the little tyrants in the neighborhood coming over to your house, right? We know what that feeling's like, right? So a role, a, a role so pivotal to society that it's truly one of the most significant things they can do in their lives. That's not hyperbole, and the research bears it out. The fact is that the family is a fundamental building block of our society. It's where new generations are created and meant to be nurtured and taught morals, values, personal responsibility, the things that a society needs from its citizens to flourish. The strength of our families has significant impact on each and every American, from the amount of taxes we pay to the growth of our economy to the level of crime in our neighborhoods. Years of research has shown that children of nurturing, intact families are more likely to have a higher academic performance and greater emotional maturity, as well as more financial stability as they become adults. They are less likely to commit crimes and abuse alcohol and drugs. From a societal standpoint, 
Strong families led by nurturing mothers and fathers mean less poverty and dependence on the welfare system, fewer crimes, a healthier and better educated populace, and a stronger economy, among other beliefs, uh, benefits. Despite these positive outcomes, the vocation of motherhood has been under attack in America for decades by those who see it as a demeaning to women and something that holds them back from achieving their full potential. When many on the far left said that caring for children was demeaning to women, to women, Phyllis Shafley, Harvard graduate, would say that the mother who cares for her own children, quote, performs the most socially necessary role in our society. And the future of America depends on our next generation being morally, psychologically, intellectually, spiritually, and physically strong. She was absolutely right because she wouldn't back down from defending motherhood as a noble pursuit, countering the left's narrative that mothers were just setting into, settling into roles preordained by a male-dominated society. Yeah, that's what they always say. <laughs> she actually became a hero to mothers everywhere. None of this means that women can't choose having careers. It means that rather than denigrating the role of motherhood, we should be celebrating it as one of the most noble choices a woman can make. Amen? The left saw Phyllis's defense of marriage and motherhood as a form of misogyny and self-hatred. Why would a woman want to limit herself to change to, by changing herself to a husband and children? Ball and chain both. Yet many of us who are mothers know that family doesn't limit our potential. Instead, family supports us as we seek to fulfill our highest aspirations. Whether those aspirations are motherhood or motherhood and career, I am one such an example. Contrary to the predictions of the left, staying home for each of my children's formative years took little away from the pursuit of my career. I have managed to do everything I could have ever imagined, from serving on the local school, school board to serving three U.S. presidents. Today, as a proud grandma, I am the president of one of the most influential think tanks in the world. No one can tell me that being a stay-at-home mom prevents you from having a successful career. It took planning and some sacrifice, but the results were well worth it. So this weekend, while we're wishing our mothers and grandmothers a happy Mother's Day, we also need to acknowledge their unique contribution to society, one that has helped make this nation the envy of the world. Strong American families remain America's best anti-poverty, anti-crime, pro-health, pro-prosperity institution, and we have moms to thank for that. Amen? Isn't that great? So the reason they're irreplaceable is because they're the foundation of a healthy culture. And in fact, without moms, families and societies will collapse. And so the point is we need strong women, especially strong moms. Now, why do we need strong Christian moms? Well, there's another number of reasons. And I put together five different articles and kind of gave you the substance of it as I read to you now. This is taken from, uh, like I said, multiple sources. And there are six things about moms that make them unique and important and irreplaceable. The first is mothers play a critical role in the family unit, which is the foundation of a stable and cohesive society. The mother-child relationship is essential for the healthy development of children. You have to have that. In fact, there's, I read a number of articles that in the first five years, the connection that the mother has to the children is dramatic, and those children who don't have that connection end up having nine predictable outcomes that are all negative. They gotta be connected to mom. Number two, mothers are the greatest pillars and cornerstone of society. Behind every successful individual are the sacrifices of a nurturing mother. Number three, a mother's presence, nurturing, concern, and involvement does immense good in a young child's life and development. Studies consistently show the profound positive impact of engaged motherhood. Number four, mothers jug juggling multiple roles, that is, raising children, managing household, pursuing careers, and contributing to communities. Their strength and resilience empower the next coming generation. These last two are kind of cool. Mothers provide unconditional love or as close as you can get to that in a fallen world, correct? Support during fears and struggles, hope when discouraged, and help children develop wisdom and strong values. Their influence shapes good citizens. 
Number six, mothers are heroes, friends, and motivators who build up their children's confidence and ability to face life's challenges. Society needs their powerful, nurturing presence. So here's the point. In essence, mothers are indispensable to society because of their vital roles in the family unit, child development, instilling values, providing selfless love and support, and preparing youngsters to become productive members of society. Their influence transcends many generations. Many generations. And you say, well, how, how, how far does that go, especially in the spiritual realm? Well, God said through the third and fourth generation of those who love him, that if you love the Lord and you're setting that example for your children, that God promises that you will have those in relationship with God to the third and the fourth generation. So how you live your life today, mom, will affect four generations down the road. You being in church today, God sees, and that honors him, and you're worshiping him, and you're making it a priority, and you're setting the example to your children. God sees that, and he's going to bless you three and four generations down the road for your faithfulness today. Amen? Isn't that good news? Let me read you one last uh, article called The Powerful Influence of Moms in Christian Households by the Barna Group, which is a Christian research firm. So scientific research highlights the profound influence Christian mothers can have on their children's spiritual development and faith formation. Here are some key findings. Number one, the Barnard study found that children, uh, that, excuse me, found that Christian mothers are the primary spiritual nurturers and coaches for their children, especially during the teen years. Mothers are the ones most likely to, number one, encourage church attendance, 79%. Teach kids about the Bible, 66%. Teach kids about God's forgiveness, 66%. And teach kids about religious traditions, 72%. To be partners with their children in prayer, 63%. And conversations about God, 70%. And about the Bible, 71%. And answer faith questions, 72% with all with their teens. Number two, mothers tend to be the confidants, providers of support and drivers of faith formation in Christian households. 68% of Gen Z Christians say their mom was there for them in their last personal crisis and who they go to first. I mean, this isn't Father's Day, but boy, this is bad news for dads. <laughs> Thank you, moms, correct? Number three, modeling Christ-like behavior is crucial as Children often mimic what they see their mothers do and say. A mother's attitudes, responses, and admitting mistakes shape a child's view of the Lord. When your child sees you on your knees asking God to forgive you for what you did wrong, and when you apologize to that, your child and say, I'm sorry for the way I behaved, that changes their view of the Lord in a positive way. As you live your faith out before the children, they're getting their first understanding of who God is from you. Isn't that beautiful? Number four, praying with and for children, reading the Bible to them, and being diligent in spiritual duties helps make the Lord's word and faith more appealing to kids. And number five, countless Christian leaders credit their mothers and grandmothers for nurturing their faith through education, scripture, church involvement, and embodying godly examples from a young age. Conclusion of this article, the research highlights that Christian mothers play a vital role in their child's spiritual development through intentional discipleship, modeling Christ-like character, creating a nurturing environment in the home for faith to flourish, and making God's word appealing and applicable to life. A mother's godly influence can leave a powerful, and here's the phrase, multi-generational legacy of faith. Praise the Lord for that. Amen. Yeah, let's give him a hand. As you live your faith, God honors that in your children for many, many generations. And so that's encouraging to me. So what does God's word actually say about strong moms or strong women? Well, in Proverbs chapter 31, we read this, verse 10. Who can find a woman of virtue for her value is far above rubies? And then he gives us a long list of stuff, and then it gets to verse 30. Kind of, it's like bracketed between these two verses, verse 10 and verse 30. Verse 30 says this, charm is deceitful and beauty is passing. So while you're charming and beautiful, Linda, it's not always going to be that way. <laughs> Thank God you're more than just a pretty face. Right? 
But a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be, what's that word? Praised. She's going to be praised. Because having a pretty face is nice, and having a charming spirit is nice, but that's not the most important thing. The most important thing is your relationship with God. And so how does God de define a strong woman? Well, in verse 10, it's translated, who can find a woman of virtue? And this is the King James translation. New King James has excellence. Another translation has good. Another translation has noble. Another translate, you getting the idea? They don't know how to translate this word because the truth is the word woman of virtue is two words, eshet, woman, and kahil. And what is kahil? Military might. They just don't think that's a good thing to say about mom when the translators go, oh, military might. What do you mean? She's tough. She is strong. In fact, a, a classic lexicon, which is a dictionary of the Hebrew Bible, known as Brown, Driver, and Briggs, it's a classic, you know, go-to, says it this way. It says, Ishet Ke'il is the Hebrew term for strong woman or woman of influence. Eshet is the word for woman, and kahil is defined as strong or influential. This word has the basic idea of strength and influence. If you go down another couple, it says, and is used of military might. She's a strong woman. Who's that remind you of? Remember the lady in the Old Testament that Israel's war were warring against this foreign general, and they were losing the battle? So the woman sn snuck into the general's tent while he was sleeping had a tent peg and a hammer and put it through his head, killed the guy, and the Jews won the war. That's a strong woman. Now, that's sexy. You go, wow, that's a woman, man. Don't mess with her, right? So my point is this. God sees strength in women as a good thing. That's a good thing. Strong women are, is a good thing, and it's not just physical strength. So what, what, is, what exactly is then a strong mom as we look at all of this? The, this term means strong, influential, and virtuous. That's really what it means. It means they're strong in, as a human being. The woman is strong. And therefore, she has strong character or virtue. And therefore, she has strong influence wherever she goes. That's why these three go together. So I've just translated it that way in my own notes as strong, influential, and virtuous. And she's the one, it's only found three times in the Bible. And so we're going to look at those three times because that tells us what they're like. And it's used once in Ruth and twice in Proverbs. And so we'll begin by looking at Ruth chapter 3, verse 11. And this is very simple. A strong mom is a woman that has a good reputation. Ruth 3.11 says this, And now, my daughter, do not fear. I will do for you all that you request. Why? Because all the people of my town know that you are a virtuous woman, an eshet kahil. In other words, she has a reputation. She has great influence. Everybody around knows who she is and what she's about. She's led such an excellent life, such a self-sacrificial self -sacrificial life, such an honoring life to her mother-in-law that the whole town is whispering good gossip about her. She has a good reputation. That's because she's a strong woman. Number two, she brings honor and joy to her husband and family. Proverbs 12, verse 4. An excellent woman, Eshet Kahil, is the crown of her husband. What is a crown? In Hebrew, the crown emphasizes two things. One, honor. Two, joy. So if you have a crown, you're honored, and it's a joyful thing to be able to wear a crown. It's like the victor's crown, right, or the king's crown, or whatever it is. If you have a crown, it's a joyful thing, and it's a beautiful thing, and it demonstrates respect. So it brings honor and respect and joy to her husband and family. An excellent woman, a Shetkehil, is the crown of her husband. But she who causes shame is like rottenness in his bones. I don't need to explain that a lot, do I? We'll move beyond that. The point is, a strong, influential, virtuous woman brings honor, joy, and gladness to her husband. And three, she fears the Lord. She fears the Lord. One, she has a great reputation. Number two, she brings joy and honor to her family. And number three, she fears the Lord. 
And Proverbs 31, verse 10, tells us that she has irreplaceable value. You can't buy her no matter how much rubies you have. You just you can't do that. And in the end, it says why. And in the middle, you have this list. Let me read you this list. We're not going to go into detail. I just want you to read the list that the Proverbs give us in chapter 30. One, he says this. She is trustworthy, verse 11. She is encouraging, verse 12. She is hardworking, verses 13 and 17. She is well-prepared, in verse 18. She is generous, in verse 20. She is brave, in verse 21. She is resourceful, in verses 14, 16, and 24. She is wise, in verse 26. She's well thought of, in verse 28. But most importantly, verse 30, she fears the Lord. Cha- Charm is deceitful and beauty is passing, but a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. So what's the point? The point that the the Proverbs writer is making for us is this is a great woman. This is a strong, virtuous woman. This is the Eshet Kahil. And then a list of all the byproducts of that person's natural uh, personality and the way she conducts her life. And then says what? But the most important thing is she fears the Lord. Why is that important? Are you ready? Because that's the source of her strength. The source of the virtuous woman, the strong woman, the source of her strength is not herself. It is the Lord. And because she fears the Lord, she has the strength. Now, what does it mean to fear the Lord? Well, to fear the Lord means to love the Lord so much that you fear doing something that would be dishonoring to him or disappointing to him. That's all. It's, you have such a love relationship with the Lord that you don't want to do anything that would be offensive to him or would harm or hurt his feelings in that sense, disappoint him, because you love him. It's not like, oh, no, the Lord's going to get me. It's not that kind of fear. It's the kind of fear, oh, I love him so much, I don't want to blow this. And if that's your spirit and your attitude, then that means you are a strong woman in God's eyes, a virtuous woman in God's eyes a wonderful woman in God's eyes. So what is the source of the strength? It's the Lord himself. In Ephesians 6.10, it says, be strong in the Lord and the strength of what? His might. You're going to be strong in his might. A strong woman's strength, influence, virtue comes from the quality of her personal relationship with the Lord. When you strengthen your relationship with the Lord, your relationship with the Lord will strengthen you. You don't have to worry about being strong in any other area of your life if you're strong in your relationship to the Lord and relying on him. So how can a mom grow stronger? How do we do this? You ready? Now, this to me is the most important thing I'm going to tell you, ladies, today. All right? I really desire that you be strong women as the Bible defines it. This eshet kahil, this person that trusts in the Lord, Are you ready? Here it is. Stop trying to be the virtuous, strong, influential woman. Stop that whole, I'm going to manufacture this. I just saw that list of 10 characteristics in Proverbs chapter 31, and I'm putting together my to-do desk tomorrow. Don't do that. Do not do that. Do not do that. Here's what you do. I'm going to draw closer. When you draw closer to the Lord, he will produce those qualities in you supernaturally in a natural way. We even have it on the screen. Stop trying to manufacture strength, influence, and virtue. Instead, seek the Lord, walk in his strength, and he will supernaturally, naturally produce these qualities in virtues and influence in your life. Rest in the Lord. So this Mother's Day, the message isn't work harder to be a better mom. It's enjoy the Lord more. Can you do that? That's your focus. The Lord, your love relationship with the the Lord. We are not factories that produce fruit. We are human beings in relationship with the Almighty, and he produces fruit through us. Get off the treadmill of trying to produce the virtuous woman. Just be close to the Lord, and that will make you a virtuous woman. Isn't that encouraging? That doesn't mean be lazy about everything else, but it does mean prioritize that relationship with the Lord. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, Paul says this in his own experience. It applies to every Christian. And he says, he, the Lord, said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, 
I would rather boast about my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities and reproaches in needs and persecutions and distresses and soiled diapers and crying babies. It doesn't say that, but that's kind of the idea, okay? For Christ's sake, for when I am weak, then I am strong. Let's say that together. When I'm weak, then I'm strong. In other words, when I focus my life on the relationship I have with God, his strength is made alive in me, and I do that. I become aware of that when I understand it's not my strength that's going to pull, pull this off. It's going to be God and his strength working through me. The secret to a woman's strength is awareness of her weakness and need for God's strength. So bottom line, ladies, remember this, and I do this every single Sunday when I leave the prayer room and come to preach. I say these two phrases to me, and this applies to every mom who's trying to be the woman that God wants her to be. It's very simple. Apart from Christ, I can do nothing. But I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Let me give you the two verses on that. John 15, 5. I am the vine, Jesus said. You're the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing, nothing. So your job is to abide. What does it mean to abide? It means to walk with. That's all. It means to walk with the Lord, love the Lord, be with the Lord, enjoy the Lord. Can you do that? Then when you do that, God produces his fruit in your life. So it's not manufactured by your flesh. It's manufactured by God's spirit. And it produces a natural garden of beautiful virtues that makes you a strong woman. And that's why in Philippians 4.13, it says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can't do it apart from Christ, but Christ will do it in me and through me to the blessing of others and the glory of God. So I, what? I cannot do anything apart from Christ, but I can do everything with him. And so here's your life principle, and we'll kind of wrap it up with this. Only God can produce godly strength of character in you as an Eshet Kail kind of woman. So it is the strength of your personal relationship to the Lord that will determine the level of the Lord's strength in you. It is the strength of your personal relationship with the Lord that will determine the level of the Lord's strength working through you. That's how you become the virtuous, influential, strong, I might add, studly woman on Mother's Day. So I'm going to pray, and what I want to do is pray for all the moms and women who are here and we'll wrap it up with that. Sound good? Let's bow in prayer. I wrote this out because I wanted to get this right. Dear Heavenly Father, on this Mother's Day weekend, we pray for all the mothers who are with us today. We ask you to bless them with your grace, that you grant them renewed strength, and that you shower them with your love. May they feel valued and cherished and appreciated for their strong spirits, their sacrificial hearts, and their tender care. We ask you to breathe into them strength and virtue and noble character. Make them strong women who rely on you, who love you, and are overflowing with joy in you. For we ask this blessing in Jesus' name. Amen.